Hi guys and welcome to this course. My name is Brookin and this course is focused on some of the essential Azure services for .NET developer. Azure has many services that it offers and sometimes .NET developers are not aware of these services. The services are so helpful that if you had to build the same code using traditional .NET application, it will take you almost double or triple the time. But using the right service can make a big difference. So in this course, we will first start by exploring Azure Blob Storage, which is used to store data on the cloud. If you need to upload large chunks of data like images, videos, file, etc. on the cloud, Azure Storage is the Microsoft solution to cloud data storage. We will build an application using .NET to upload our items to the Azure Blob and interact with the container. Then we will understand the different access level with Blob Storage and see how we can restrict access using SAS token. Once we complete our Blob Storage, the next service that we will see is Azure Function. Azure Function is a serverless concept of cloud native design that allows a piece of code to be deployed and executed without any need of server infrastructure, web server, or any configuration. Azure Function can also be written in multiple languages like C Sharp, Java, Python, and TypeScript. Using Azure Function, you only focus on the piece of code that matters the most. All the other configuration are handled by Azure Functions. Once we understand the Azure function, the next service will be Logic Apps. Azure Logic Apps is a cloud-based platform for creating and running automated workflows that integrate with your application, data, services, and system. Using this platform, you can build highly scalable integration solution for your business scenarios using the built-in connectors. The best part about Logic Apps is that you can build them easily by using the Webflow Designer, which does not require coding. And then the last service that we will be looking at will be Azure Cache for Redis. It is a fully managed in-memory cache that enables high performance and scalable architecture. We will create that service on Azure Portal, and then we will see how to integrate that within a .NET application. This course will walk you through the basics of all of the services as well as I will walk you on how to use them in a real-world scenario and you will see what benefit they bring to the table. So let's get started with this exciting course from the next video. In this video, let me walk you through all the services that we will cover in this course and what exactly we will learn in those services. First service we will learn is the Azure Blob Storage. We will have to create a storage account, and once we create that, we will see how containers and blobs are arranged inside the Blob Storage. We will manage the blobs and container from the Azure portal directly. We will see how their access can be restricted, or we can grant some permission. Once we are comfortable with Blob Storage from the Azure portal, we will perform CRUD operations on Blob from .NET application. We will also perform CRUD operations on containers using .NET application. After that, we will see how metadata can be set on a particular Blob from the Azure portal. Once we play around with metadata from our .NET application, we will see how we can secure a particular blob using SAS token. And the SAS token security can be applied at blob, container, and storage account level. That will give you a solid foundation in understanding everything with the blob storage. Then we will shift our focus to the next service, which will be Azure Function. 
We will understand the fundamentals and benefits of Azure Function. We will create our first Azure Function inside the Azure portal and then we will switch to Visual Studio and we will be creating many complex Azure Functions. We will see HTTP Trigger, Queue Trigger, Blob Trigger and Timer Trigger Functions. We will also see how to use Dependency Injection inside Azure Functions. We will be injecting the DB context to access our SQL database. Then we will see what are serverless function and how to create a basic serverless function that will work on CRUD operations and we will use that API. After we complete everything with Azure Functions, we will switch to the next service which will be Logic Apps. There also we will understand the fundamentals and benefits of Logic Apps. Logic Apps are configured from the Azure portal, so we will create them and they will be of type HTTP Trigger, Queue Trigger, Blob Trigger and Timer Trigger. But with Logic App we also have something new which is if else logic, switch case, for each, until and variables. We will understand all of that and we will use the built-in connectors to see Logic App in action. Finally, we will have our last service which is Azure Cache for Redis. We will first understand what is caching and what are the benefits and why we should use Azure Cache for Redis. We will also implement the Azure Cache in .NET Core project and see caching in action. Finally, we will see how to invalidate a Redis cache based on the timer. So with that, we have a lot to cover with the four services in this course. Let's get started with all of that from the next video. Let's talk about the prerequisites for this course. Before we proceed further, let's talk about the prerequisites for this course. I want you guys to have basic understanding of ASP.NET Core application. And the reason behind that is we will be building small CRUD application project to see our Azure services in action in the .NET application. So you should be familiar with how MVC application work, what are models, views, controllers, how to add new functionalities, and how to use Entity Framework Core for the CRUD operations. These are pretty basic things that comes with .NET application. I do not expect you guys to have any exposure to Azure. We will start from scratch with all the services. But if you do not have any experience with .NET Core MVC application, I would recommend free course that I have on .NET Mastery.com. For all the project resources, you will go to .NET Mastery.com. Here you will go on the Courses tab and you will have to select the course that you are in. Once you find the course there, you will select the Details button here and I have a link to the GitHub code. When you click there, it will take you to the GitHub repository and here if you examine the commits here, I will have each of the commit by the section name and the video name. That way you can see exactly what was changed in that video. Then if we go back to .NET Mastery, we also have the course content. This is really important because I will be providing snippets throughout the course which are available inside the course content. So make sure to download that and when you open the file, you will examine I have the snippets here which have the code snippets that we will be using. I also have all the images that we will be using in this course. So once you download the project resources and you have the GitHub URL, let's continue from the next video. When you are taking any course, it is common to have questions on if something does not work. In that case, the first thing that you should do is check the Q&A section. Most likely someone else has also faced the same issue, so if you check the Q&A section, you will most likely find a solution to the question that you have. But if you have a new question or something is not working, 
you should always Google that error message. Because when you are working with a real world application, many times you will run into situations that do not work as expected or you will have some question. If you Google that, I am pretty sure Stack Overflow or other website will have the in-depth explanation of the issue that you are facing. And when you take that approach, now you are building a habit of solving the errors yourself and that will help you in the long run. But even after all of that, you are still not able to solve the issue. Raise a new question in the Q&A section and I'll be happy to answer and solve all the questions that you have. I always like to answer all the questions my students have on the course, but I also want you to build a good habit of googling the error because that will help you in the long run.